Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Harika. So in this video, I am going to talk about how we can use uh, a Swagger UI and uh, we can do orchestrator API calls and we can get the folders from that particular orchestrator. Okay, so in the previous videos, we have seen how we can actually uh, come to this point and how we can, uh, you know, use all the APIs that we have by using the Swagger, right? So if you are someone new to my channel, I would suggest you to go and watch the previous videos. So how you can access those videos, I would paste the links in the description. And also if you wanted to browse by your own, you can just go to my channel. So on my channel, you can find this playlist videos so this is the playlist I'm talking about. So orchestrator API Postman. So in this playlist, um, let me show you. So in this playlist, you can find all the videos which gives you enough understanding. So Swagger. So this is the video I'm talking about. I would paste the link in the description. And along with that, if you wanted to learn more about the basics, right, from the basics of uh, doing the API calls um, on your cloud orchestrator, you can just follow these videos uh, in the playlist. And also, if you wanted to learn API automation, because this uh, this serves as a basics, because we will be using them here and there uh, during our, uh, you know, uh, explanation. So I would suggest this gives you enough understanding of what you have to know before we actually start in this session. So I would paste the uh, playlist link in my description. If you want, you can just check it out or if you want to explore more on my channel. So you can see there are many videos and many playlists. If you want to explore more about any of the topics, you can find everything over here on my channel. So now I'll just come directly to the topic. Um, so here I can see that uh, I'm in my Swagger page. So I wanted to get the folder. So I'll show you first how we can do that uh, using a Swagger because we have seen the similar pattern while using Postman and HTTP request, right? So in the same way here, I'm going to show you how we can try it out in Swagger and also how we can do using UiPath Studio by using Activity Orchestrator HTTP request, okay? So first of all, I'm going to... Uh, the folders and I have something called as get folders. So if you just observe here, we have to um, either, you know, uh, use the OAuth required scope, but I'm using Cloud Orchestrator and I'm directly, you know, fetching from there, uh, redirected from there. So I'm not, uh, I don't want it to give any authentication. So these are the parameters in the left. So if you see anything that has a star, that means it's a mandatory field going forward, we will see the mandatory field also, which we have to provide in only then we can execute that particular API. So now for this, if you see this, nothing is a uh, required parameter or mandatory parameter. So I'm just clicking on try it out. And then I will just click on execute. So if you, if you just see here the responses, the code should be 200. That means it's a successful uh, uh, execution and we will see the output shortly. So I'm just clicking on execute. And here you can just observe. This is a request that we have sent to the orchestrator uh, through I mean the through API calls get uh, request and uh, the request URL is this. And if you see it's a 200, that means it's a successful. Uh, and here we can see there are total 11 folders that we've got and you have seen in my orchestrator already be in the previous videos while doing get folders call using uh, postman and also http request we have 11 folders in total so all these folders along with key value and the id and the name of the folder every detail about that particular folder is clearly given over here right so uh, how we can do how we can perform the same action using orchestrator http request in our studio i'll just show you shortly um let me go to studio so if you see i have already created a workflow let me just run this workflow and i'll show you the output before we actually re recreate it so if you just see um the execution of the automation has started and it has given me all the folders uh, details here. But if you see it's of the type string because the output of this 
is of type string. So now let me just recreate this, whatever the parameters I have given over here. So for that, I am taking orchestrator HTTP request activity. So for this, uh, in the previous video, while using HTTP request, uh, we have used multiple parameters like headers, authorization, and all these things. But for this process to run, uh, I mean, for this activity to run, the main criteria is it should be connected to the orchestrator that you wanted to access. So you wanted to get the folders from this particular orchestrator URL. So make sure that your robot is connected to this particular URL. That's the most primary prerequisite that you have to do. Okay. And also enable the permissions, which I have shown you in the previous video. So I'll paste the link in the description. Please watch that. So you will be very clear with the prerequisites and the basics that you need to know. And once after the, I have pulled this and I, I have make sure that this is connected to the orchestrator where I wanted to fetch the folders from. Okay. So once after that's done, what's the next thing? The method type is get. So that is perfect. And the body. So if you just see here, uh, JSON payload is nothing but the body that you, I have to provide in. So if you just see, we don't have a body that I have to provide here for my request. Okay. So I'm just going to take the URL, but let me let me just go over here here if you just see here i'm i don't have a body i'm just having a json uh, url right so let me just uh, go in and see here so this is null i'm not going to provide anything and the method if you just see what is a method it's a get okay and so I'm just keeping as it is. So if you just uh, observe the relative endpoint, in case of um, a HTTP request, we have provided the whole URL. But here, uh, there's no point of providing the whole URL. I'm just going to take only the relative URL. So where can I get it from? So this is my relative URL. Just copy this from here. Just copy it and go into your studio providing the URL, that's it, okay? And what's the final thing? I wanted to pro, uh, take the output, okay? So uh, I just need only the JSON response. So I'm going to take it as a get folders variable that I've created and the status code should be 200. So let's take a status code also. So once that's done, just take log message and here I'm going to do, um, what is it? Get folders. Okay. Along with the status code. Okay. In the, I'm going to give a plus and some space. And after that, I'm going to take the status code. Fine. So till here we can just, okay. Status code is an integer, right? So I'm just going to convert this into a string. And then I'll debug the file. So what exactly I'm going to do next is, uh, here we've we got the output, right? We got the output. It's the similar thing that I have done while doing the HTTP request. So just take this output, copy this whole thing and paste it in a notepad. Here I'm already having this, okay? So if you see the pattern is, this is a JSON, right? We can clearly see, but here, here we can see that it's of the type string. So what I have to do, I have to pass it into a variable, into an activity, which will deserialize this format. Okay. So for that, uh, I already created a video on different formats of JSON and how you can use the activities as per your requirement to fetch the values from that particular JSON. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, I'll just take a deserialized JSON. I wanted to fetch the ID of that particular folder. Okay. So this I have already explained in the previous video, but still I want to explain for someone who is new here. But if you want to understand in depth, I would tell you why I'm choosing this particular activity, why I am going for, you know, certain, um, activity. You can just learn it in the video. I will provide that URL as well. Uh, you know what to choose uh, based on the format of the JSON. Okay. 
So uh, I'm gonna take the get folders because the input has to be string. So after this, what will be the output of this? Let me go over here and create an output value variable. Um, get folders j object, okay? JSON object. So this will provide me the JSON object. And after that, what should I take? The token, right? So if you have watched the previous videos, this will be simple for you. That's why I'm telling again and again to watch the basics. So what is that? Get uh, get folder J object of what is the token value that I'm having here? Is the value, okay? So I'm taking value dot to string because it's of type string is a input type and it returns me an array okay so get array of folders okay so inside this what i'm going to do i'm going to use a for each and inside this i'm going to iterate for each value of an array okay so what is the output of this get array folders right so this contains an array and what is the object type so we have clearly discussed it should be of day, j, j token right and inside that i have an id so now let's take log message and what is the key here item dot or sorry item of what is the value that i'm having so first one is the display name i'm taking the display name and just give it over here item of display name and i wanted to give take the key id as well okay so item of what is the id okay let's uh, go here and check if we have given id capital i small d okay small d and there's some error okay j token it's of type j token so let's change this to string okay and this as well perfect so we have used these things so i haven't gone in depth why i'm choosing this activity and why i'm choosing this activity and why i'm using all these things if you want to learn uh, in depth and get more grip on this particular concept i would suggest you please watch that videos and i'm going to run this file and it will give me what are the different folders and and corresponding ids to that particular folders okay so it's quite easy so let me just debug the file. Perfect, right? So see, it is displaying all the IDs against all the folders that I have in my orchestrator. So let's go to orchestrator and see here. So these are all the folders that I have and we can see all these folders getting displayed with the IDs against them. So this is perfect, right? So I hope you have learned enough in this video and how to use an orchestrator HTTP request to get the details about the folders uh, that are there in your orchestrator. So this is how you can do that. It's quite simple. It, you just have to, it's quite simple compared to, to HTTP request because in HTTP request we have followed so much uh, because we have to do authentication. We have to get the barrier key and then we have to pass it. So everything, but it's of different type. It, uh, if, if you don't have a requirement of uh, using orchestrator HTTP HTTP request and definitely HTTP request would be useful. So um, that's all pretty much in this video. Going forward, I'll talk more about how we can use, uh, you know, uh, orchestrator API calls by using Postman and, uh, you know,
know do a create a folder or edit a folder and all these different things and create an asset uh, you know perform the robot calls and everything so if you find this video useful do let me know in the comment section and thank you so much for watching please do like the videos and share in with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel that gives me a lot of motivation to do new, more videos